A very good evening and thank you for joining us on the tail end of 2023. As we are about to turn into a brand new year, we have for you a compilation of key events that occurred throughout the past 12 months. This is a flashback of 2023, starting off with the eventful month of January. January began with new reigns taking over Brazil as Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva took office as Brazil's new president on January 1st in an inauguration ceremony in the capital city of Brasilia. One week after Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva's presidential inauguration, supporters of former President Jair Bolsonaro invaded and defaced the country's Congress, Presidential Palace and Supreme Court on January 8th in a grim echo of the U.S. Capitol invasion two years ago. At around the same time, tens of thousands of people filed into St. Peter's Basilica on January 2nd to pay their respects to former Pope Benedict, whose body was laying in state after his death two days earlier. Pope Francis presided over the funeral on January 5th before tens of thousands of mourners in St. Peter's Square. Meanwhile, in updates on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, a Ukrainian missile strike on January 1st against a vocational school in the Russian-controlled Donetsk region of Ukraine housing mobilized Russian troops became one of the bloodiest incidents of Russia's nearly year-long war in Ukraine at the time. On January 13th, the Russian military said its forces had control of Solodar, claiming to have made its first big battlefield gain after half a year of military setbacks. At least 40 people were killed after a Russian missile strike hit an apartment building in the central city of Dnipro on January 14th, making it the deadliest civilian incident of Moscow's three-month campaign of firing missiles at cities far from the front. At least 16 people, including Ukrainian Interior Minister Denis Monsarysky, other senior officials, and three children were killed on January 18th when a helicopter crashed near a nursery outside Kiev. Germany on January 25th said it would supply its Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine, overcoming misgivings about sending heavy weaponry that Kiev sees as crucial to defeat Russia's invasion, but Moscow casts as a dangerous provocation. Germany's decision paved the way for other countries such as Poland, Spain, Finland and the Netherlands and Norway to supply some of their Leopard tanks to Ukraine, going some way towards delivering the hundreds of tanks that Ukraine said it needed. Republican Kevin McCarthy was elected Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives early on January 7th, after 15 ballots and several days of congressional chaos. He won at last on January 7th on a margin of 216 to 212. He was able to be elected with the votes of fewer than half the House members only because six in his own party withheld their votes, not backing McCarthy as a leader, but also not voting for another contender. Hospital wards in China began to overflow in early January amid a surge of COVID-19 cases after Beijing abruptly reversed its zero-COVID policy in December. In the week up to January 15th, the number of people hospitalized with the disease rose by 70% to 63,307 versus the previous week, according to a World Health Organization report based on data submitted by Beijing. This was the highest weekly figure China has reported since COVID-19 has first emerged more than three years ago. Prince Harry's Spare became UK's fastest-selling non-fiction book ever. Its publisher said on January 10th, after days of TV interviews, leaks and a mistaken early release of the memoir containing intimate revelations about the British royal family. Harry's book has garnered attention around the world with its disclosures about his personal struggles and its accusations about other royals, including his father King Charles, stepmother Camilla and elder brother Prince William. Protests in Peru that were triggered by the ousting of President Pedro Castillo in December continued throughout the month of January, leading to the deaths of at least 48 people in the country's worst outbreak of violence in over 20 years. Protesters blocked roads, took over airports and set some buildings on fire, demanded the resignation of President Dina Boluarte, Congress's closure, a new constitution and Castillo's release. There were also marches calling for an end to the unrest. California was hit by severe weather in January, bringing floods, mudslides and hail. A weather system known as an atmospheric river of dense, moist tropical air brought torrential rain and gale-force winds to the state, prompting evacuations of some 25,000 people, including the affluent town of Montecito, 
and nearby areas of the Santa Barbara coast. A state emergency was declared in New Zealand's biggest city, Auckland, on January 27th as extreme weather caused widespread flooding and evacuations, closing the city's airports and forcing organizers to cancel a scheduled concert by Elton John. People were evacuated from their homes in waist-deep water, while major roads were also blocked by the floods, causing long traffic queues on highways. At least 71 people were killed on January 15th when a domestic flight of Yeti Airlines crashed in Pokhara in Nepal, the worst air crash in three decades in the small Himalayan nation. The plane on a scheduled flight from Kathmandu to Pokhara, gateway to the scenic Annapurna mountain range, was carrying 57 Nepalis, five Indians, four Russians, two South Koreans and one person each from Argentina, Ireland, Australia and France. Climate activist Greta Thunberg was among others detained on January 17th during protests against the demolition of a German village to make way for a coal mine. Thunberg was detained while protesting at an open-cast coal mine of Garweiser II, some nine kilometers from Luzeralath, where she sat with a group of protesters near the edge of a mine. She was later released with a brief detention. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern on January 19th made a shock announcement that she had no more in the tank to lead the country and would step down and not seek re-election. Ardern attended her last official engagement as Prime Minister on January 24th before handing over to successor Chris Hibbs on January 25th. Two back-to-back -back shootings by Asian suspects during the Lunar New Year shook Californians in one of its bloodiest spates of mass gun violence in decades. Just two days after a gunman killed 10 at a ballroom dance hall during a Lunar New Year celebration late on January 21st, seven more victims were shot dead in the coastal northern California city of Half Moon Bay on January. A gunman killed at least seven people and wounded 10 others in a synagogue in the outskirts of Jerusalem on January 27th in an attack that heightened fears of a spiral in violence, a day after the deadliest Israeli raid in the West Bank in years. The attack, which police described as a terrorist incident, underlined fears of an escalation in violence after months of clashes in the West Bank, culminating in a raid on January 26th that killed at least nine Palestinians. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken urged Israelis and Palestinians to ease tensions on January 30th during a visit to Jerusalem, reaffirming a long-stalled peace vision of two states side by side as the only path forward. Arriving amid the bloodiest violence in years, Blinken met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and later in the West Bank with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. A suicide bomber blew himself up inside a crowded mosque in a highly fortified security compound in Pakistan on January 30th, killed at least 100 people, including 27 police officials, the latest in a string of attacks against the police. The bomber behind the attack had been identified as a member of the militant network Mozam Jan Ansari. And that was a summing up of key events that occurred in January of 2023. Join us after the break for more. Welcome back. We are moving on to the month of February now, which began with an unfortunate calamity in the form of an earthquake that took countless lives. Let's take a look. A 7.8 magnitude quake hit southeastern Turkey and parts of Syria before sunrise on February 6th, followed by multiple aftershocks in the early afternoon. The quakes left more than 50,000 people dead across the two countries and brought down thousands of buildings, leaving countless people trapped in the rubble. Four days after the 7.8 magnitude quake, rescuers continued to pull people from the rubble alive. United Nations aid chief Martin Griffiths on February 11th described the devastating earthquake that hit southern Turkey and northwestern Syria as the worst event in 100 years in this region. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad condemned the West's reaction to the devastating earthquake that struck the country in his first public comments on February 10th. A suspected Chinese surveillance balloon, which Beijing denied was a government spy vessel, spent a week flying over the United States and Canada before being shot down off the Atlantic coast on U.S. President Joe Biden's orders. The incident, which had prompted U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to postpone a planned visit to Beijing, further aggravated all already strained relations between Washington and Beijing. China had said the balloon was intended for meteorological and other scientific purposes and had accidentally blown off course. 
President Joe Biden pledged to work with opposition lawmakers even as he sparred with them in a State of the Union speech on February 7th that served as a blueprint for his 2024 re-election campaign. Some Republicans heckled and jeered at him at times during a speech that lasted some 73 minutes. Biden's public approval rating edged one percent point higher to 41 percent in an opinion poll that closed on February 5th. That was close to the lowest level of his presidency with 65 percent of Americans saying they believe the country was on the wrong track compared to 58 percent a year earlier. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky arrived in the United Kingdom on February 8th to meet Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and address Parliament as Kyiv urged the West to deliver more weapons to help it drive Russian forces out. It was Zelensky Zelensky's second foreign visit since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24, 2022. Zelensky addressed British lawmakers as he repeatedly hammered home a call for combat aircraft, which he referred to as wings for freedom. United States President Joe Biden made a surprise visit to Kyiv on February 20th. Biden was greeted outside the Marinsky Palace by Zelensky and his wife Olena Zelenska. Air raid sirens blared across Kyiv on February 20th as Biden and Zelensky visited St. Michael's Golden Dome Cathedral to pay tribute to dead soldiers. <laughs> Russian President Vladimir Putin attended a re-slaying ceremony in Moscow on February 23rd to mark Defender of the Fatherland Day, a public holiday in Russia that honors those serving in the armed forces and military veterans. The annual ceremony came a day before the one-year anniversary of the start of Russia's special military operation in Ukraine, while Zelensky marked the first anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion on February 24th in Kyiv. Zelensky addressed members of Ukraine's armed forces and a small gathering of dignitaries at St. Sophie Square. According to the medical officials, Israeli troops killed 10 Palestinians, including at least three gunmen and three civilians, and wounded over 100 others during a raid on Nablu in the occupied West Bank on February 22nd. According to an army statement, the Israeli military confirmed the operation in Nablu, saying troops shot back after coming under fire while trying to detain militants suspected of planning imminent attacks. There were no Israeli casualties. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More on Flashback 2023 right after this. Welcome back. We now enter the third and final month planned for tonight's run-up of Flashback 2023, which is the month of March. Seemingly packed with several shifts in global power from Xi Jinping's continued leadership to the economic woes that struck the strongest of banks, Here's a look at March 2023. 57 people were killed when a passenger train that was carrying mostly university students collided head-on with a cargo train near the city of Larissa in central Greece. It was the deadliest rail disaster in Greek history. About 250 survivors, some splattered with blood, arrived in the northern city of Thessaloniki on buses after being evacuated from the crash site. Transport Minister Kostas Karmanelis submitted his resignation, saying he took responsibility for the state's long-standing failures. Clashes erupted in Athens on March 5th after some 10,000 protesters, including students and railway workers, gathered outside parliament to express grief and anger. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the founder of Russia's Wagner Mercenary Force, on March 2nd published a video showing showing his fighters inside Bakhmut, the Ukrainian city Wagner had been fighting to capture for months. His announcement came after weeks of Moscow sending thousands of troops in waves to try to capture the eastern city and secured its first battlefield victory in more than half a year. Russia's Wagner Group said on March 8th that it had taken full control of the eastern part of Bakhmut. Israel was thrown into one of the biggest internal crises in its history by plans proposed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his new hard-right government to overhaul the judiciary system. The plans introduced in the beginning of 2023 led to escalating protests in March by a furious opposition who saw the reform as a threat to democracy. Clashes broke out at several Tel Aviv protests as police confronted demonstrators who repeatedly blocked highways and roads. Lawmakers were escorted out of the Constitution Committee session and the bill was approved by the committee for possible rectification. Later on March 27, Netanyahu called a temporary halt to his judicial plans amid fears that Israel's worst national crisis in years 
could fracture his coalition or escalate into violence. China's President Xi Jinping on March 10 secured his third five-year term in an unprecedented move to tighten his grip to become the country's most powerful leader since Mao Zedong. Nearly 3,000 members of China's rubber stamp parliament, the National People's Congress, voted unanimously in the Great Hall of the People for Xi to be president in an election where there was no other candidate. Silicon Valley Bank became the largest bank since 2008 financial crisis to collapse when California regulators closed it on March 10. The high-profile lender to the technology sector collapsed after depositors fled in large numbers, withdrawing $42 billion in 24 hours, as high interest rates caused the bank to wobble. Large U.S. banks injected $30 billion in deposits into First Republic Bank on March 16, swooping in to rescue yet another lender caught up in a widening crisis. European bank stocks slumped on March 15, with embattled Credit Suisse tumbling as much as 30% to another record low. The 167-year-old Credit Suisse became the biggest name ensnared in the global turmoil. On March 16, the bank said it intended to borrow up to 50 billion Swiss francs from the Swiss National Bank to boost its liquidity. Swiss bank UBS agreed on March 19 to buy its rival Credit Suisse for 3 billion Swiss francs in stock and agreed to assume up to 5 billion francs in losses in a shotgun merger engineered by Swiss authorities. Tropical cyclone Freddy struck southern Africa for a second time in March and killed more than 1,000 people, mostly in Malawi, but also in Mozambique and Madagascar. The record-breaking storm, which lasted more than a month, had first made landfall in Africa in February after developing off the coast of Australia and crossing the entire South Indian Ocean. On March 11th, Freddy once again hit Mozambique, leaving a trail of destruction and killed more than 100 people. The storm then moved inland towards Malawi with torrential rains that caused landslides affecting over 2 million people as it washed away homes, roads and other infrastructure. The United States announced on March 14 that it had been forced to down one of its MQ-9 Reaper intelligence and surveillance drones after it was struck by a Russian Su-27 fighter, the first direct US-Russian incident since the Ukraine war began. Russia's defense ministry blamed sharp maneuvering by the drone for the crash in the Black Sea near Crimea. French Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne used a special procedure to push an unpopular pensions bill through the National Assembly without a vote on March 16, triggering boos and rare chaotic scenes in the French Parliament. Spontaneous protests broke out in Paris later in the evening on March 16. Police fired tear gas to disperse crowds and protesters lit fires in the streets of the French capital. Hundreds of thousands marched against Macron's pension reform on March 23rd in a day of nationwide protests and strike. Though the demonstration were mostly peaceful, police and protesters clashed in some cities, including Nantes. The city hall of the southwestern French city of Bordeaux was set ablaze in the evening on March 23rd as protests raged over France. The International Criminal Court on March 17 issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin alleging Moscow's forcible deportation of Ukrainian children was a war crime. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited Crimea on March 18, a day after the ICC warrant, on an unannounced visit to mark the 9th anniversary of Russia's annexation of the peninsula from Ukraine. Putin made a surprise visit to Mariupol, the Kremlin reported on March 19, in what would be the president's first trip to the Russian-occupied territories of Ukraine's Donbas region since the start of the war. Chinese President Xi Jinping met his dear friend Vladimir Putin in Moscow on March 20, seeking both to deepen economic ties with an ally he saw as a useful counterweight to the West and to promote Beijing's role as a potential peacemaker in Ukraine. A storm system over parts of the southern U.S. spawned several tornadoes in late March, the strongest of which ripped through Rolling Fork, Mississippi, on March 24, killing 26 people. Homes in towns of around 1,900 people were reduced to rubble by the twister, which snapped tree trunks like twigs and tossed cars aside like toys. A heavily armed shooter killed three nine-year-olds and three adult staffers on March 27th at a private Christian school in Tennessee's capital city before police killed the assailant. The incident was the 90th U.S. school shooting of 2023. Forty migrants died on March 28th after a fire broke at a migrant detention center in the Mexican northern border city of Clouda Juarez. 
in one of Mexico's deadliest migrant tragedies. According to the authorities, the fire began after one or more of the migrants' satellite mattresses as a protest, claiming the lives mostly of migrants from Central America. Pope Francis was admitted to hospital on March 29th after complaining of breathing difficulties. Earlier in the day, the 86-year-old Pope had attended the weekly general audience at the Vatican. Former U.S. President Donald Trump said he expected to be arrested on March 21st in a case brought by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and called on his supporters to protest according to a post on Truth Social on March 18th. Trump was indicted by a Manhattan grand jury on March 30th for his role in a hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels, becoming the first former U.S. president to face criminal charges even as he makes another run for the White House. Prosecutors accused Trump of falsifying business records to conceal a violation of election laws during his successful 2016 campaign. Trump said he was completely innocent and indicated he would not drop out of the 2024 presidential race. Russia's FSB security service said on March 30th it had arrested Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Greshkovich, accusing him of gathering information about a Russian defense company that was a state secret. The Wall Street Journal denied Greshkovich was spying. The White House dismissed the espionage charges against Greshkovich as ridiculous on March 30th and said there was no reason to believe that the charges are accurate. And that is all we have planned for you on tonight's rendition of Flashback 2023. Join us again tomorrow for a complete recap of the months of April through to June. If you had missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.